Greece, Greece, and Greece. According to Wikipedia, Greece is the potential of losing something of value, be it physical health, financial wealth, social status, or even emotional well-being. Risk starts since we were babies. Perhaps the common risk that babies may face is called SIDS. SIDS stands for Sudden Death Infant Syndrome. It is a disease, uh, for information, is the leading cause of death in the U.S. for the babies at the age of one month until one year old. It is not a disease or illness, but rather it is a diagnosis given by the doctor when baby suddenly dies without any prior notice and the exact reason of it can't be found. Is it quite devastating? And now, let's move on to another case, which is co-curricular activities, or CCA. Is a CCA compulsory thing for you to graduate from SIM? If the answer is no, then why do you guys join CCA, such as those master, especially the premium one, where you have to pay a certain amount of money? Don't you think you put yourself at a risk where you're studying time for the upcoming SAM? Or your leisure time with your friends can be decreased? For me, it has never been a risk joining Toastmasters as a part of my CCA. Apart from feeling in my CV, I always believe in a cost-benefit analysis, where the benefit of joining Toastmasters, such as being a competent communicator, being a competent leader, or having many friends outweighs the cost, which is the membership fee. Moreover, I always believe that each one of us here has a strong willingness and a strong desire to achieve more than the academic success. So rather than of joining CCA such as Master as a risk, our strong desire fits our risk. And now, after hearing the cases that I just mentioned, what are the common things can you guys identify? Risk exists in every story. In fact, since we were children, we were naturally risk takers. We will jump into a pool for about 12 feet late while our parents might get shocked or get fainted. But as we grow older and older, we learn to fear failure, and we start to, to holding ourselves back. <clears throat> then as a result, we don't want to take risks, and we think that risks are invaluable, but we just want to move on. And what is, what is more, risks In fact, when we want to take risks, we, we tend to stay in our comfort zone. We don't want to take risks. And we learn that it is better to stay in our status quo despite the threat of not growing and thriving. And this is why I want to give some suggestions on how we can improve, on how to overcome risks and be friends with them. And this one is I got from frugalmodel.com. And now let's go on with the first suggestion. Stop overestimating the probability of something going wrong. When seeing the risk that can block us from achieving success, we often think what could go wrong instead of what could go right. Or we may even think what we may lose along, along the way than the potential gain that we may reap in the end. And this is called loss of version. Moreover, if you only think, or if you, you want to go do something and we only think about the risk, then somehow those risks will manifest in our mind and such, we'll be afraid, and we will think that we'll overestimate the likelihood of failure in such that although those risks don't really exist, but we already perceive that those risks already exist. Now, the second suggestion, stop exaggerating tremendous scenarios. So not only our mind overestimating the probability of something going wrong, but we also often exaggerate, or we create a worst case scenario. We see ourselves jobless, losing respect from our friends, or forever shame with failure. And again, our, somehow our brains are wired to create a such a bad thing as a self-defense mechanism. As a result, when we see risks, we see them as barriers that we should avoid, rather than we see risks as opportunity that we should tap on. Then, so whenever we want to take a risk, trust your gut feeling, do your research when it comes down to decision making. And now, the third solution is start with small and manageable goals. I believe each one of us here has a big goal that you want to achieve, am I right? And to achieve those big goals, I suggest that we should start with small goals. I, it means like, we divide our big goal into small goals. So, when we achieve the success of a small goal, our brain will release the feel-good dopamine. 
In fact, when the brain release the feel good dopamine, it will strive fast, it will trigger us to strive more and take bigger risks. Moreover, this technique will also get us to take tangible actions and be less likely worried when it comes down to a big life decision. So, another thing is that I believe that those who are going to create, uh, those that who are going to graduate very soon, there is a common problem that crosses our mind. What is the next step of the graduation? Shall we be the startup with the loss, uh, with the risk of making losses, or shall we be an employee like most of the graduates with the risk of being fired by our job, uh, by our boss the very next day? And again, our brains are wired to think or to exaggerate a worst case scenario. We see ourselves jobless or making losses. But what we really need to do is that we need to start thinking positive and divide our big goal into small goals. So for example, if you want to build a startup, let's see, if I'm in here and this is the success I want to reach, and there is a gap behind it, right? Then what we need to do is that we need to define our big goal. So perhaps the first small goal that we want to achieve is that when we finally establish our first startup, then what's the second small goal? It is the time when we finally hit a certain amount of sales. Then the list of the third small goals, fourth small goal can go on and on. So to conclude, I believe that we have learned a lesson on how to overcome risk and embrace the risk itself. And basically everything we do is risky, isn't it? Even when we, even when we choose to live a healthy lifestyle, eat nutritious food, or even exercise daily, then on one night, we take a shower. Then suddenly, we sleep and we fell on the floor until our heart stopped beating and we no more breath. And if that's the case, shall we stop taking a shower? Of course not, right? Now the point I want to mention here is that let's embrace risk, let's be friends with them. Because what? Let's say this together with me, the count of three. One, two, three. A life without the risk, risk is a life unlived. unlived.